Hey everybody, today's uh, October 29th and it's my younger brother's golden birthday. So if my younger brother's watching, happy birthday little bro. Um, hope you have a great day. Uh, as you can probably tell, I'm more sick now than I was. And it's, whatever this is, is pretty horrendous. But I wanted to come out here and give you guys a little update on the H. And then I also have to go out back and throw the wheel bearing in the, the D really quick. So wheel bearing and dust shield. Um, big thanks to Brian for the wheel bearing and a couple other parts for the D radiator parts and uh, uh, some clutch parts and rear platform supports. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, with this H, uh, we got the, this is all that's left of it. We've got the the rear casing tore down to almost nothing. We still have to get the, uh, the lower shaft out. You can see it there. And then our reverse reverse idler shaft these snake lights are kind of a pain sometimes reverse idler shaft is right here so we have to get that out yet but i'm gonna need to get some heat on it in order to get it out because this coupler for the hydraulics right here on the bottom of the shaft is uh stuck so i'm gonna have to get some heat on there in order to get it off and then we should be able to get the the bottom shaft out so but i wanted to show you all what else we found if you see that big goober line on the right side of the screen there that there is a weld and a pretty nasty braze slash nickel rod weld what happens is on these H's and M's, these here. Let me get these. Let me get this situated here. So on these H's and M's, this inner bearing here fails over time, and then the rollers in that bearing drop down inside the case, and when that happens, they get underneath these bull gears, and they'll sandwich themselves in here and actually bust the bottom of the case out because the the bull gear and all the rotating parts are a lot stronger than the bottom of the casting so it'll just push those those balls right through the bottom and that's that's the result so when you're looking at h's and m's make sure you check the bottom of the casings in the back for for holes or welds or cracks because it's a really common problem but I've got some, some ties out to get a, a different case for this. And it's really not going to be too, uh, too awful expensive, which is good. And we're also going to pick up a oh, magnet's pretty strong. We're also going to pick up the pinion carrier and a new pinion shaft because um, the one we have is, is pretty chewed up. This one here has got a chip out of this tooth, and then there's another one on the other side that's chipped. So we'll, uh, we'll replace the pinion as well. But the bull gears look good. All the bearings are like brand new except for that one pilot bearing, this one here, that goes on the end of the top shaft. So thankful for that. But now we're kind of at a standstill until we go get that case, the pinion carrier, the pinion, and then we're going to clean everything. So my cousin, who I have to give a big shout out to, by the way, my cousin Mike, he dropped off a sandblast cabinet and also something that's going to make our life a lot easier. 
an oxyacetylene torch setup. So I just got to get the tanks filled, but that'll come in handy <laughs> big time in the shop here. So um, he's also <clears throat> he he's a industrial mechanic for for forklifts, and at their shop they have a big steam rotisserie cleaner. So we're gonna hopefully. If we can find the time, we're going to bring a lot of these parts down and put them in the rotisserie and they'll come out like brand new. So that'll save us a lot of time and scraping and, and degreasing and all that. So that's kind of the plan. And this is, it's dragging out a little bit longer than I expected, but that's sometimes that's how things roll. You know, when you're working on stuff that's 80 years old, sometimes you find some surprises, you know, so... And uh, I think using his, his rotisserie cleaner and all that is a lot better option for me. So anyways, um, I got to get some tools in the wheelbarrow quick and we'll walk back to the D and put that bearing in. It'll only take probably 10 minutes to put that bearing in. Uh, the, the long part will be putting everything in the wheelbarrow, going back there and bringing it all back up. But anyways, let's, uh, let's get that done and... I'll show you kind of what we're working with back there. Okay guys, we're back here on the D. Got the front wheel off the ground. And all we have to do is remove this center cap. It's just this big hex, or I'm sorry, square um, embossment here. Put a crescent on there, turn the cap off, and then there's a nut, a castle nut with a pinch bolt underneath here that we got to remove. And then the, the wheel just slides off. So go ahead and do that let me see if I can find a good place to set the camera caps off this is that pinch bolt and then we can just turn the the nut off put this on I I put everything on kind of loose because I knew I was gonna have to come back here Oop, I suppose I should turn the camera to face the, the project set that here bearing and then the wheel just comes right off so felt has got to go <clears throat> on first and then our dust cover goes on like this and then our bearing and we're gonna have to put more grease on here <clears throat> I 
as well grease up the bearing as well. like that. I need a bigger crescent. All right, that's all there is to it. All we gotta do is reinstall the cap and she's ready to roll. So that's all I've got for this. I'm getting my tools together, going back, putting them away and I'm gonna go back and lay down. So thanks for watching, thanks for wrenching with me. <coughs> Excuse me. <laughs> and. Um, Stay tuned. Hopefully we can get back in the shop soon. See you guys later.